This program contains views and opinions that may not be suitable for all audiences. Audience discretion is advised. Welcome to Constructive Deconstruction, everybody. I am your host, Gomer the Ranting Thespian. My co-host, as always, is the lovely Holly Christine. Hello. And as I mentioned last time, we are we have been looking for somebody to take Misha's spot now that she is no longer on the show. And this guy came in neck. He came in right behind Danny. And this is uh, Peter, also known as Gonzo Link, on pretty much everywhere that I've seen so far. How you doing? Doing pretty good. All right. So uh, before we get started with the show proper, do uh, you want to tell the people a little bit about yourself, what you're about, what you do? Uh, yeah, sure. Um, well, uh, well, what do you want to know? Um, in particular? <laughs> uh, just, just the basics, really. Okay. Um, well, uh, I'm from Alaska. I've, I was born and raised here in, uh, in the small town of Homer. Um, and I, I, I'm an actor, uh, by, by want, I guess you could say. I, uh, I do as much acting as I can. Um, I've been doing, uh, more voice acting recently, uh, the first project I was ever in was the Gotham High audio drama. I play Bruce Wayne. Ooh. And, yeah, no, a lot of fun. And I'm also involved in uh, uh, an abridged series, uh, team, uh, uh, sorry, Full Metal Alchemist Brotherhood Abridged. I play Father, and I allegedly play the narrator, although I haven't gotten much play yet. Ah. So and that... apart from that, I'm um, sorry, I just wanted to... Uh, oh, apart from okay. that, I do acting here at a local community theater, uh, and I'm also directing uh, a play this summer too. So that's very exciting. Nice. Uh, mm-hmm. Maybe I, I, you know, that is something I've never tried. I've, I've been on stage, I've worked backstage, I've never directed. Huh. It's intense. I actually directed a play last summer, and uh, it was a, it was a bit simpler than the one I'm I'm doing now. But it is a it is a process. It's very very involved. You have to be. Uh, a part of every stage of the production. You have to get a cast. You have to read through the script multiple times. Uh, then you have to do rehearsals, and that involves doing a lot of read-throughs. And, I mean, mm-hmm. you know, if you've done acting, you know what the process of going oh, yeah. through a stage production is. But it's very, very intense and involved. But it's also all the more rewarding once you actually get it off into the ground. And, and, you, and it's, you know, to, it, to varying degrees of success, it's still a very satisfying process. Yeah, it, it the well, no matter where you are when it comes to doing theater or, or acting, I at least I found it's very satisfying. So I I I can agree with you there. <laughs> yeah, theater um, is one of the it's it's one of the more unique parts of or, or, or I don't know what the word is, but it's 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 definitely a, a very a very unique way of acting because it's all all of it's happening right there. It's all and it all changes over the course of the production. No show, no two shows are ever the same. That's right. <laughs> Makes it a lot of fun. Although I will say there was last show I was in, we did a production of Arsenic and Old Lace uh, back in 2010, I believe. And I, I had both the uh, the the uh, I forget the old guy's name, the the one that almost gets killed, and then I also uh, played Mr. Witherspoon a okay. little towards the end. And I'm I'm kind of a big guy. So okay, kind of a big guy. <laughs> yeah, Holly, you've seen me in person. I am not kind of big. Yeah. <laughs> but, but you know, but there's the line in Arsenic and Old Lace where uh, Teddy compares Mr. Witherspoon to Taft, and which in my case is very apt. And just you're not the... that big. No, not that big. But... Did you ever get stuck in a tub? I have not yet. Yeah, until you get. As big as a bathtub, I don't think that you're really allowed to, to compare yourself to Taft. Okay. Well, on the stage you can. Yeah, and <laughs> and just out of nowhere, he, he made the comparison. There's there was not, of course, there's nothing written for it in the script where you do this. I, I took a look down at my tummy, felt it up a little bit, and it was obviously in such a way the audience could see it. I could see my face, and that got a laugh every night. Ah. Uh, <laughs> But yes, but Arsenic cool. and Old Lace is a fun show. <laughs> yeah, no, I, I saw a production of that um, on the same theater in, in my hometown um, in 2006, actually, like when I graduated, after I graduated high school. And yeah, it's a very fun show. Just it it's very fast paced, good dialogue and a lot of good humor. Oh, yeah. A lot of dark humor, too. Oh, Why are our co-hosts always so young? <laughs> <laughs> 
we are we are the we are the old oh, man <laughs> oh well. yeah but that happens sometimes though uh mm-hmm. but speaking of young uh the previous week as we're recording this now it's the week after spring break or at least after the spring break week of our schools in this area and as such for those who don't know we have six small kids living here at the same time, four of which are foster kids that my parents are taking care of. The other two are my cousin's kids because they need a place to stay because we're not going to leave them out on the street. So oh, six, six small kids running around, and that was a lot of the case last week. Um, I managed to get some kind of recording time in last week because my dad decided, you know what, I'm, I'm, you know, he's trying to do this thing. He's trying to earn money doing this, so we're going to take them out. And uh, But for the majority of it, the kids were here all week. And let me just say, um, I, I have to look at Michelle Duggar, who has how many, what, what over 20 kids? I have to look at her and say, Does she have f- more than 20 Whoa. kids? I think so. I, I, it's either 20 or just over 20. And now I'm going to Google it. You know me. Yeah. I have to know. Yes, she has to Google this. But I, I'm pretty sure it, it's at least close to 20. Because the last I heard it was 20. Yeah. I don't even know what to say to that. <laughs> all, all I can say is uh, to Michelle Duggar, uh, woman, you, 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 you have to be kind of. Oh, she's to... trying to get pregnant with the 20th. That's what okay. it is. Okay. I, I knew I heard 20 somewhere, but it is still quite a quite amount, quite a large amount of children. Or, or offspring. Yeah. Some, of them are, some of them are old enough, and they are of legal dating age, uh, as, as I found out in a recent article. But that's for a different show. Uh, so, are are they all hers, or are they yes. like foster? Oh, oh, Jesus! She has popped nineteen women out out of her body. Oof. Ah, uh, do not envy. No, I can't can't say that I do. No. But I mean, hey, if that's if that's uh, that's. That's that's what she wants to do. Then hey, you know, more power to you. Yeah, but uh, there's also it, there are still also part yeah. of this uh, quiverful movement, which that that's that's going to be something for another show. Okay. <laughs> oh, but uh, but for this for this particular show, it's a little lighter, and uh, we have a couple of lists, uh, admittedly from BuzzFeed. As we know, BuzzFeed is also. You know, they decided to make their own list after a certain somebody and another certain somebody and a certain child actor, well, former child actor, decided to make a video about uh, old foods from like the 80s and 90s. Mm-hmm. But mm-hmm. even even beyond that, they they have some lists that I think are kind of decent. Um, the first one I want to bring up is eleven kid eleven kids games that would be better as drinking games. We're going to ruin wait. childhoods. <laughs> <laughs> Always uh, fun. Yes. It's even more fun when you watch somebody do it to themselves. <laughs> <laughs> uh, oh. So the first one they have on here is Red Rover. And, you know, you play Red Rover, you get in a line, and, and you hold hands. You have two opposing lines. You call somebody, Red Rover, Red Rover, send Billy Bob right over. And Billy Bob tries to break the chain. If he does, then, you know, he wins. And if they don't, then whatever. Uh, First time I ever played this game, I had no idea what I was getting myself into. I was like about maybe seven or six, maybe, and uh, it was we just lined up, you know, outside to play the games. And I was like, okay, this sounds like this looks like fun. We're all standing in two lines, and then like somebody just got sent over, and I just watched in complete horror, <laughs> complete horrified fascination, I guess you could say, as they ran over and just tried to break each other's wrists, and <laughs> then it happened to me as in like somebody came barreling down in my direction and that was it yeah <laughs> that was the last time i played the game uh, I actually... yeah I, I think in school like at least in my school in my hometown we actually stopped playing it because they deemed it too dangerous that is how is i'm, I'm sorry it's like I've, I've been to schools all over the country i think the only reason we didn't play it by the time i got to graceville was because my age group was not my, my I was not in that age group anymore. It's, it was as simple as that. I remember playing it when I was going to elementary school over in Wyoming, and it was fun. Yeah, you know, you did run that risk, but <laughs> it did toughen up your wrist a little bit. I, I also yeah. have to say, I th- think this feels like a horrible idea for a drinking game because 
uh, let's see, drinking and running into something with your stomach. <laughs> Are these yeah. good ideas? <laughs> no. <laughs> Oh. Well, you just see like a, a the line of people like as as they see the person barreling towards them, like trying to shift just their 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 position, and then just having the person just barrel straight into them. Mm-hmm. Yeah, it's like oh so, no. There's all sorts of ways for this game to go wrong. Yeah. You didn't make it through. Drink. Yes, just pour right on in. I don't want to get up. Just pour it in my mouth. <laughs> okay. <laughs> oh. Uh, number two, horse, which is where, for those who don't know, is where you 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 somebody takes the yeah yeah as they ri- write it here rather I was about to say rid it here what the hell I've been I've 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 been back in Graceville for too long. Uh, <laughs> players take turns being the leader and throwing a basketball into the hoop in various ways. Once the leader makes a shot, the second player must copy in the same distance, posture, etc., and try to make the same shot. For each miss, the player gets a letter starting with O, H, O, R, and so forth. First player who gets horse loses. I remember – this is another one of those I remember kind of playing in school, and, and uh, I, I, I suck at basketball. Uh, <laughs> yeah. uh, uh, I remember playing this a lot too, and it – I seem to remember the rules being somewhat different. Like the first, the first person who gets a horse actually is the winner. I mean, I don't know. It's been a long time since I've played it. But... Oh yeah, no. It, the way I always played it was that you don't want to spell horse. Yeah. Okay. Because you and get a... the letter if you miss. Yeah. Well, and... I'm from Alaska, so everything might be different here. I don't know. <laughs> yeah. I spent too much time here to really know what the norm is. Right. Uh, and of course, you have also have the kids that when somebody spells out H O R, whore, lol, lol, lol. Because, you know, immature kids. Uh, mm-hmm. And I don't seem to remember the posture one. The distance, yeah, but not posture so much. Yeah, it was like, <laughs> you know, if you take a shot and you're facing away from the basket, the other person has to also face away from the basket and take the shot. Yeah. Yeah. No, yeah, that that's... Uh, or if you, that's, like, throw it under your leg and, and make it, then... Yeah, that, 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 the same thing. You know, that would be a really horrible way to troll somebody like me. <laughs> you get some skinny fucker up there throws it under his leg makes the basket i would be looking at him like oh fuck me are you serious i'll just take my letter and go to the end of the line <laughs> i'm gonna take my horse and go home yeah <laughs> uh, and and of course when you're drinking you'll be surprised how much easier it is to shoot a weird free throw after a few but see how long it takes before you forget how to spell horse or what a horse even is yeah, I I, <laughs> yeah. I don't think I've ever been that drunk. I don't think I have either, and I, I've been plenty drunk. I I um, probably have to be dead. <laughs> to yeah, be yeah. I, I can't say I've forgotten the spelling of a five letter word after after having if had a few or even more than a few, but no. maybe it's I just can't remember what it. Worse is. Yeah. <laughs> it's like, what's this thing? Can I eat it? Oh. Well, lots of people eat horse. So. Yeah. This is this is this is true. Oh dear! And I'm just imagining. I remember the the the, it, the uh, people who would want to play this drunk. It reminds me of a guy back in high school. He he was nowhere near drunk. He was just really really goofy and very physically goofy. And he we were doing this exercise in gym class where we had to you know shoot a basket, go to the end of the line or whatever. And he took the ball. He did this whole loping, goofy run, dribbling the entire way. And then when he went to shoot, he didn't – without breaking his stride, he picked up the ball, threw it. He didn't make the basket. It popped off, and we didn't care because he looked so, so fucking silly while doing it. <laughs> I can Let's imagine a fu- drunk person doing that. <laughs> Let's have the fun of horses just coming up with these weird, insane – uh, trick shots that you just want to see your friends try and mostly fail to replicate. Yeah, and yeah. it's always fun whenever you do sort of pull off something that ridiculous, and it's just like, all right, top that bitch. Yeah, yeah. and then everybody's going to get a letter, and you know it. Yes. Mm. <laughs> and and full disclosure, yes, I would troll somebody like that if I was playing. <laughs> even if, even you know, especially if I'm going to be trolling the skinny fucker who trolled me. Mm. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Number three, musical chairs. And if we all know what musical chairs is. You put 
number of chairs out there. You have one more person than all the chairs. You play the tune. The tune stops. The only person left standing has to go out, and you take a chair with you. Oh, uh, and according this to could this, lead to a few interesting fights. Oh yeah, this is my chair. <laughs> <laughs> you didn't sit there first. I was looking at it. <laughs> Uh, and I'm just imagining some of the more unfortunate implications. Like, yes, I got this chair. It's harder than I thought. Oh, that's why. <laughs> I'm three fifths on the chair. You're not. Yeah. I have more of it. My ass is bigger, and it's on the chair more. So uh, this would be a kind of game for you, Gomer. Yes, definitely. <laughs> Although, well, I, I do know people who who have bigger asses than me. Uh, yeah. not, not gonna say who. <laughs> <laughs> I have no idea who in here may have a ghetto booty. None. Uh, no, no. No, no clue. No, none no whatsoever. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> uh, but of course, the new rules state, this is already played at every bar and party ever, only with hopefully better music. Might as well make it official and let people know that you will fight them for the last available stool. <laughs> Pretty much what we were talking about. Yeah. Oh, number four, heads up, seven up. Oh my god, I don't think I've played this since elementary school. Yeah, I haven't. Same here. No, uh, I think I've played it since like mm, second grade. I almost said yeah. the year out loud, and then I was like, oh, let's not do that. <laughs> <laughs> we don't want to. We don't want to date ourselves too awful much. Yeah. Oh dear. Uh oh. But uh, for those who don't know what we're talking about, uh, the old game, seven players from a group, f from a group rather, are chosen to go to the front of the room. Excuse me. Sitting players put their heads down and thumbs up. The chosen ones walk around the room and touch the thumb of one player. When seven thumbs have been touched, the selected seated players have to try to guess which chosen one tapped their thumb. If they guess correctly, they get to be a chooser. Everyone cheats. <laughs> now, I actually, when I, I remember playing this game uh, in fifth grade, and um, everybody always knew that I was the one who picked them because they actually made a point of saying this. Your hands are always so cold. <laughs> <laughs> so, yay me. Oh, dear. Oh. And, of course, if you want to play this, make this a drinking game. If you don't guess your picker, you take a shot. Yeah. And then, of course, everyone still cheats. Yeah, yeah. I mean, well, yeah, because everybody's like, how can I cover up, like, put my head down and cover up where my eyes can be seen and still peek out enough to be able to see who's standing in front of me when they touch my thumb? Oh, yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I admit, I've done it a few times, although a lot of times I didn't do it too awful much because I kind of like the challenge and, and just the luck-based mission style of it, I guess. Ah. Uh, uh, number five, four corners. Players designate four corners with numbers or colors. Counter is selected and counts to ten, then calls out one of the corners without looking. Players in that corner are out. When fewer, when four or fewer players are left, everyone has to go to separate corners until there is one winner left. And I don't remember quite playing this particular one, but, you know, hey. Now, this is one I, I know I never played, or at least I have no clear memory of playing it. Yeah. Oh. We played it at the skating rink. <laughs> <laughs> it was like the end of the night game. It was the last thing that you did before you went home. Oh, uh, yes. Uh, and of course, the new one is just same game. Just if you get out, you just go back to your drink. It's just basically what it is anyway. <laughs> just imagine playing a wool drunk. Yo, okay, love... we have the four colors, red, blue, yellow, green. You count to ten, and you call one of those four colors. Okay. One, two, step you ten. I call turquoise! What's now, with the we... accent? I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> it came from the drink. Yes. Okay. Because I, I do recall that being a hallmark of uh, some of my friends and our drinking habits. Whenever we get enough to drink, the accents start coming out. Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh, number six. Duck, duck, goose. Okay, how many... I know I've played it. Um, and Oh, yeah. I, I played this yeah. game a lot as a kid. Yeah. 
so, but for those who don't know, who've never played it, or even watched an episode of Full House, <clears throat> players sit in a circle, the picker or ducker walks around the circle, tapping everyone on the head, calling each person a duck, until they pick somebody to be the goose. Goose has to chase the player, trying to tag them before they get back to the empty spot. If the picker makes it back, the goose becomes the next picker. Sometimes a mush pot is included, where the losing picker has to sit until another picker loses and takes their place. Okay, I don't remember the mush pot rule, but everything else I do remember. Yeah, I've, I've never played it that way, so... Yeah. Alright, so with the new game, same rules except every picker puts a little bit of their drink in the mush putt. Mush putt? I yeah, think I think that's mush a typo. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I, I think they mean mush pot here, which is a cup that the losing pickers have to drink from. Alternate, alternately, the picker goes around the room tapping everyone on the head until they find Goose, who then has to buy a round of Grey Goose for the room. This game ends very quickly. Yes. <laughs> yeah. Everybody's like, well, I don't have that much money, so yeah. sorry, guys. <laughs> and, like, what what do you do? Do you just play the game, then go buy a bottle of Grey Goose, and then finish the bottle? It's like, all right, guys, we're doing it again. <laughs> oh. All right, number seven, red light, green light. Oh, this, this was always so much fun. I mean, we, we, we even did this as a, as an exercise in theater games, too, yeah, at least mm -hmm. in college. Uh, the old rules, if you don't know, one player is chosen to be the caller, the other players stand a good distance away from them. While facing away from the line of players, the caller says green light, and the players move closer to the caller, to the caller until they say red light, at which point they freeze. The caller turns around as they say red light, and if they catch anyone still moving, the player goes back to the starting point. First player to reach the caller wins. It's a lot of fun. <laughs> uh, staying perfectly still while smashed is much harder than it seems, by the way. Yes, it is. I mean, I mean, just I, 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 my bedroom is situated right across the hall from our bathroom, and when I'm drunk and and I need, and, and I know this is going a little bit TMI, when when I'm drunk and I have to stand there and and actually take a piss, uh, I feel like I'm about to at least feel like I'm about to fall over into the tub, or then I get stuck and become the next William Taft. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> uh. But yeah. yeah, when you constantly feel like you're moving, you're, you're physically moving to make sure you have that balance. So uh, imagine doing that with red light, green light. <laughs> yeah. Uh, I do a lot of motion with my hands when I'm drunk. Mm -hmm. I tend to, uh, but, but to be fair, that's more when I'm like talking to people and trying to convey something to them that I feel like I can't do otherwise verbally. Yeah. I, I admit, I keep doing that. i'm still doing it right now nobody can see it but i am doing it because that's just how i do it uh, i think it's even worse when i'm drunk uh, <laughs> simon says is number eight. Oh dear if you don't know what simon says is where what what, what rock have you been living under man yeah what oh, childhood yeah. do you have yeah, i know seriously right? i think everybody knows that game <laughs> yes but if you've been living under that rock here are the rules it's simply simon says blank and you have to do whatever simon says if simon doesn't say it if somebody just says you know pick up your nintendo 3ds you know you don't do that because simon didn't say now if simon says simon says pick up your nintendo 3ds then you do it uh and the new rules i love this simon <laughs> says do a shot of jaeger simon says shotgun a beer simon says jump up and down now throw up and everyone loses. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Simon didn't say throw up. That's that's a dangerous combination. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, doing a shot of anything before shotgunning a beer is a recipe for disaster, unless you've been doing that, like, every night for the past year or so. Yeah. And even then, that's that's still not a good a good thing to do. No. And this is why I only drink one kind of alcohol. <laughs> At a time. <laughs> Yes. <sighs> All right. Number nine. Mother May I. Basically the matriarchal version of Simon Says and Red Light Green Light combined, except the entrapment of Mother is trying to get the players to move towards her by answering whether or not they could take a certain number of steps. Uh, and, and of course, that concept has been played with. I, note, I remember it. Note, bleh, I find it the most noteworthy example. I swear I have not been drinking. <laughs> <laughs> and in... Uh, the uh, Exorcist spoofed re Repossessed, where the one of the main characters is Father May I. 
and they and of course they play off that joke. Uh, <laughs> but of course now with with the drunken rules, mother, may I put my beer down? No, you may not. <laughs> uh, you must, mother, may I take a drink of beer? Yes, you may. Slip. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, I honestly don't know if I've ever actually played this game. I feel like I have, but then again, I could just be remembering Simon Says and Red Light, Green Light together. Yeah. But I know I've at least I've, I've heard of this. Yeah. but I'm pretty sure I've played it. I mean, obviously not in anything that I can remember, but I'm pretty sure I did. I've played it. We used to play in the... I don't know why specifically my neighbor's driveway, but we used to, I think it's just because it was a flat driveway and the driveway that was for my house was on a hill. Ah. So it just made it easier if we played there instead. There you go. Uh, number 10, telephone. Oh and, God. Oh, this one. <laughs> <laughs> Another one we, we will do as, as uh, theater exercises. A player sit in a line or circle. One person whispers a sentence or phrase into the ear of the next of the player next to them, and then so on and so forth until it gets all the way back around to the last player who says it out loud, which is usually something unrelated to the original statement. It's like it's like real life autocorrect. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. That so or they, uh, Google Translate. Yeah. Uh, yeah, I think do... Google Translate is probably a more apt description of what the game is like. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, yeah. And they state the new rules to be the same, except the players are seated in order of intoxication with the drunkest person as the originator. <laughs> this would be fun. Whatever garbled I... nonsense they say in the beginning will become something more coherent by the last sober person. Yeah, yeah they did that say would... last. <laughs> <laughs> that, would, that, would be a, that would be fun. I'm going to have to propose this next time I'm hanging out with my friends because I think they might actually go for it. Yeah. You know what? There is a bar literally right down the road from me. Actually, I think two of them that, that I could go to and I could be like, hey, you know, why don't we try to have a whole bar activity? Let's do this. Oh, my God. <laughs> <laughs> a whole bunch of drunk rednecks trying to do this. <laughs> Who's uh, been here since 4 p.m.? I have! <laughs> uh, number 11, the last one, Parachute. This isn't so much of a game as an activity where players stand in a circle, <laughs> run. Yeah. Yeah, you just lift it up, you sit under it, and while it yeah. falls down. Yeah, you lift it up. Sometimes you send in one person and they sit under it by themselves, or you pull it down behind you and you all sit under it. I don't know why playing with the parachute was so awesome, but it was. Uh huh. I'm so I'm just sad I didn't get to yeah. do it very often. It was like oh. Yeah, that was always like the best day in PE class. It was like parachute day. It's like yes. <laughs> uh, the new rule state on second thought being under a hot blanket with lots of drunk people and not a lot of oxygen sounds horrible this is probably better when you're high that's about it <laughs> yeah and of, and of course if you get the right combination of drunk people in there orgy oh uh, <laughs> yeah yeah no yeah. thanks whatever, like, whatever suits you man not a drunken orgy all, or <laughs> all of our orgies need to be sober this is something that Gomer has talked about before. He he can't participate in a drunken orgy because he wants to remember everything. Yes. <laughs> because God damn it, I want to make sure. And and plus, you also run the risk of accidentally putting your bits into something that may not be an orifice. I mean, it's like you could uh, accidentally <laughs> fuck somebody's nostril or something. I mean that would be that would be embarrassing for one. For another thing, that would be a trip to the hospital, and you have all of those costs. And then, and then of course, <laughs> if somebody decides they want to sue, and it's just you've thought it, about this way too much, man. Actually, I just pull all of this out of my ass. This is going in a in a much different direction than I expected. <laughs> yes, it is. Oh, but uh, that that is the end of that list. But as I've as I believe I mentioned at the beginning of the show, uh, we do have another one. Uh, 52 Lies Children's Books Told You Growing Up. And I love this stuff. Yes. This, this is, we, we are going to ruin even more childhoods. Yay. <laughs> and, and I love the little subtitle under the, the article header. When you turn 11, you'll get your Hogwarts acceptance letter. Not! <laughs> oh, God. Well, I was not, actually 11. Because any 11-year-old child is going to know that already that they don't have magical abilities. Hello? <laughs> <laughs> 
Yeah, I was already 11 when I started reading Harry Potter, so I already had that dream shattered. (laughs) To be fair, the third book had already come out at that point, so I had a little catching up to do. Oh, Oh. no, that actually made it worse. I'm sorry. Oh, you were old. Oh, Oh, man. Oh, okay. So, so number one on this list, if you're well-behaved, you can live inside of a chocolate factory. Bullshit. Yeah. I don't think anybody thought that because he had to win a golden ticket to even be able to go to the factory. So, yeah, it's just yeah, you're amazingly. Because sorry, I'm gonna poke holes in most of these <laughs> lies that we were supposedly told. Yes. Yeah. As long as your child isn't a dumbass, they shouldn't believe these things are actually true. Yes, and as long as I'm your glad... child does not represent one of the seven deadly sins, you're cool. Yes. <laughs> Very much so. Although I would hate to see the child that represents lust. Ugh. Yeah. No, no, thank you. Probably a reason why uh, Roald Dahl didn't include seven children. Or eight, for that matter. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> uh, number two. Speaking of Roald Dahl, your amazingly perfect first grade teacher will legally adopt you. Yeah. No, she won't. And besides, my amazing... My, I like... You know, I, I love my parents. I... You know, they loved me. They treated me decently. And my first grade – I actually ended up having two first grade teachers. The first one was a bitch. The other one, well, she was eh. – yeah. My was first all grade right. teacher was awesome. Yeah. Yeah, same here. But um, also uh, another another – I don't know if this appears further down the list, but um, if you're special, you can have telekinesis. <laughs> yeah. Oh, I wish. I wish I could have telekinesis. That would be so awesome. I know, right? I mean, especially if I could use it on myself, I could just lift myself up and just fly to the grocery store. You could lift yourself into the bathtub. Yes. <laughs> or out of the bathtub. Or out of the tub. bathtub. Yes. <laughs> or I could even just lift the bathtub. That would be awesome. Home renovation would be just, just well, revolutionized. Uh. Yeah. So number three, everything else in the world goes to sleep when you do. I don't know what this is referencing, to be uh, honest. Uh, Good Night Moon. Oh, but... Uh, it's not really the point of the story, but... Okay. Yeah. <laughs> I before mean, you're you go to bed, you have to say good night. You, yeah, that... before you go to bed, you have to say good night to everything in your room multiple times. Yes. Good night, iPad. Good night, light. Good night, phone. Good night, can of Coca-Cola. Good night, electrical outlet. <laughs> yeah, because you're not saying goodnight to those things because they're going to bed. For instance, the moon isn't going to bed. No. So, just at least saying. not when you do. And no, the moon's going... doing its job. Yeah. Yeah. Now, if you go, if you go to bed the same time the moon is going to bed, you're probably a night owl. Uh, yeah. Or you're just me and you forgot to take your medication again. There you go. <laughs> Which was yesterday. <laughs> <laughs> I was really uh, grumpy about it too, and then I was filling up my pill container for the month for the next day, or on the next day, and uh-oh. noticed that I hadn't taken my sleep medication, and I was like, "Well, no wonder I couldn't sleep." Oh, <laughs> so I was like, "Oh man." Oh no. Uh, number four: caterpillars only eat in perfect circles. And this reference, they have the, I guess, the very hungry caterpillar. Yeah. You don't know the very hungry caterpillar. It's a great it's, book. I, it's probably one that the I looked at the thing. The art looks a little familiar, but it's just been so long. Yeah, he did a lot of books, and it's all yeah. with the same style. Yeah, yeah. With the same sort of like uh, like cut and paste uh, looking. I mean, I don't know if that's actually. It's like more watercolor. Mm-hmm. Or it's it, very it, it trippy looks, looking. Yeah. Yeah, okay. Eric Hale's a a pretty pretty cool artist. Yeah. Uh, number five, cats live in hats. Also not the point of the book. No. <laughs> he, he doesn't live in it. He wears he just a hat. wears it. <laughs> yeah. On a, on a boring Things gray rainy day, a magic cat it. will appear and make everything dirty. horrible, dirty, and messy, but then turn it all back to normal, and you'll be cool. Yeah, just just a little bit there, and not like the goddamn movie. Well, how? What year did that did that Mike Myers? I, I come honestly out? have never watched it. 
I think I, it was like 2001 or 2002, maybe. Yeah, I've I've seen like bits and pieces of it with with the kids here watching it. The kids seem to like it. I'm sitting here thinking, oh no. <laughs> no. Yeah, I, I I I made the the the, the decision to opt out of that one. Yeah. As, as a kid, and I'm glad I did. Yeah. Uh, number six, the best real estate in New York City is actually fruit. That would be awesome. Yeah, to live in a peach pit. Yes, that would be so fucking awesome. Not only, not only do you so have your a home, house would eventually rot and yeah, well, yeah, you would have to. But you know what? But while it was still fresh, magic. yeah. Don't don't question it. This is true. <laughs> and, and hey, you know what? Fruit stand. But, yeah, you could start up a very successful fruit stand or peach. You could you could, you could start up the peach pit again. There you go. <laughs> in uh, New York instead of California. There you go. And hey, peach is just like they taste from Georgia. <laughs> <laughs> Except without all the bigotry. Ah. <laughs> uh, number seven. Trees will talk to you and become your friend. Well, of course they do. Yes. And they will give you everything that you ask of them. Mm-hmm. Yeah. I would love to be able to go out to the backyard and say, hey, tree, can you give me enough money to move? Pulk, <laughs> pulk. Nope, it only gives me pecans. Damn. Well, uh, Wait, I got apples. Sold those, <laughs> you know, you could make some money. Just this saying. Is this is Did true. You your branches. I want to make a house. <laughs> hey, that's a nice looking college. truck. Can I make a boat out of it? Hey, I'm when old and college. useless now. Can I, I... sit on you? <laughs> <laughs> I'm old and useless now. <laughs> wow. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Uh. Anyway, when I was in college, I lived in a house that had a chestnut tree out front. And some guy comes up and asks if, you know, he can take the chestnuts. And honestly, it was like, yeah, because otherwise we were going to have to go do it. And it's like, you got, you want to pay us to take our chestnuts out of our yard? Okay, that's fine. Yeah, we're good with that. There you go. Sweet, yeah. Uh, I think, you know, actually, we actually probably tried... I... I don't remember if we tried selling them. I know we used to pick the pecans a lot when I was a kid. I don't remember if we've ever tried selling them. I'll have to ask about that. Yeah, this uh, was just some guy driving by and saw the tree and was like, oh, man, yeah. look at all those chestnuts. <laughs> Number eight, as as was mentioned at the beginning, when you turn 11, you'll get your Hogwarts acceptance letter. We've already covered that. Yeah. Uh, number nine, if you collect enough pebbles, you'll find a magical one that will grant you wishes. Really? I, I, I have I have yet to see a magical pebble. Yeah, I haven't found one. Oh, no. Yes. Yeah. Uh, let's see. Number 10, you can run away from home to live in the Mets. There are a surprising number of places that you can actually run away to and live in without getting caught. <laughs> so, yeah. so people used to do it to airports all the time. There you go. And didn't... Yeah. Wasn't there a movie based on somebody running away and living in a Walmart? No, I don't know. Uh, not that I, not that I know of. Or at least living in a Walmart. I don't know if she was running away, but. And then just yesterday at work, we were talking about um, somebody who spoke at another person's college graduation about how they lived in their car the entire time they were in school. Yeah, I've heard. And of... they would just get people to let them in the dorm to shower or whatever. Yeah. Do their and there's the guy who. Sink. And there's the guy who, uh, the Terminal, uh, you know, the Steven Spielberg movie is based off of who lived in the, or still lives, I think, in the Paris airport and has yeah. been there since, like, the 80s. Wow. Yeah, it's it's pretty crazy. I mean, it, it, and it's the, the same basic scenario where he um, was flying to, I think, to, Br- to Britain, and then when he was in the middle of the, it was, when he was in the air, his visa got revoked, and then he had... He had to like either go back or he was told to go back because he couldn't go to to Britain. And then he was just like, "No, I, I want to go there, and I'm not leaving until it happens." And then, if even uh, you know, years later when he did get his visa renewed, he's just like, "Nah, I'm cool." <laughs> oh wow! Well, hey, you know, whatever works. Uh, yeah. Let's see, number eleven. There's an entire community of ant-sized people who live under the floorboards of your house. Well, duh. Of course. I mean, so yeah. That's where all of my stuff goes. That's what happens to everybody's socks. 
Or you have a cat. <laughs> well, I don't have a cat, so I blame the borrowers. Well. Uh, let's see. The next one, number 12. People who are ugly on the inside look ugly on the outside. Unfortunately, so, oh. this is not true. <laughs> no, except for the garbage pail kids. Well, except for the fact that if yeah. everybody who was a jerk was really ugly, there would be far less attractive people in the world. So. Oh, yeah. Yeah, yeah Justin Bieber, oh my god, he would look like the Antichrist chewed up and spat out by a hell demon. <laughs> <laughs> Huh. Number 13. The back of your wardrobe will lead you to Narnia. I never believed that. Yeah, I, I wanted to believe. Either. That would have been kind of cool, but I didn't believe it. Yeah. Well, and the oh. thing is, like, even if you did want to believe it, just the simple fact of knowing that, it wouldn't... You, you'd, you'd be prohibited from going. Yeah. Yeah, it'd be like, you stay out of there, you're not going back there. But um... I, I did once have a closet that led to my sister's room, though. There you go. For some reason, there was a door between the two rooms, and in the back of my closet and her closet was a, a door that you could open up and go in between. This was a house that was built in, like, 1894, so there was a lot of doors that you wouldn't see in your typical house anymore, but, yeah. Wow. So I totally could have pretended I was going to Narnia and stepped into her world, her room because it was all blue. It was like blue carpet, blue walls. I'd be like, oh, man, it's snowy and wintry. Ah, <laughs> <laughs> uh, yes. The power of imagination. <laughs> I love it. Number 14. The families you babysit will bring you and your four best friends along on their vacations. No, they won't. Uh, believe me, I... I, I I asked for a babysitter to come along with us one time. Parents were like, no. <laughs> <laughs> uh, and we've babysat a bunch of our, you know, like our cousins or what have you. None of them invited us along. So. Uh, number, oh, well. fif number 15. Toys are living things with emotions. Uh, the, the example <laughs> they use is corduroy, but the first one I thought of is probably the first one everybody else thought of. Toy Story. Toy Story, yeah. And to be yeah. honest, I always thought it would be cool as a kid, you know. Yeah. So this was before Toy Story came out. <laughs> oh, yeah. But my things would come alive when I left the room. That would be nice. Uh, especially if they came alive and they, like, cleaned up for you. You know. Oh, oh I'm not lazy. <laughs> or, or, you know, prepared you for your birthday uh, party that apparently your parents just seemingly forgot all about. Yeah. I'm talking about Fatty Bear, by the way. There you go. And to tie into that, number fifth, number uh, 16, rather, your stuffed animals come alive when you're not around. Oh. Uh, so, yeah. Again, those are things, they would have been nice, but I didn't believe in them. To yeah. To be completely honest. Again, I wanted to believe. Yeah, yeah that was a, it would be cool, but I never actually thought that they were yeah. alive. Yeah. Uh, number 17. Day and night are controlled by a man who walks around the planet turning lamp on and off every few moments. What kind yeah. of a job is that? I don't, I don't even know this book. Me neither. You, you've never, you guys have never read The Little Prince? I, I mean, that is, that is what, yeah, it's The Little Prince. It's such an amazing book. I mean, yeah, it's, it's got, it, it's got that false hope that it gives you as a kid, I guess, but it's, it's really well, well written. I'm surprised you've never read it. Uh, I, actually, I have read it. I was. <laughs> oh. Um, I, I don't remember this part of the book. <laughs> I, yeah. Like I remember the desert and the fox and all of that, but I don't remember a guy who turns off and on a light. Yeah. Yeah, I, it, it's been a while since I've read it um, too, and I don't quite remember that part. But I missed a lot of it as a kid. So I was like, uh, "Where does that happen?" Yeah. Ah. Uh. Let's see, the next next one on the list, number 18, if someone has wavy hair, it's because their head is wavy. I don't remember <laughs> believing that. Me neither. Oh. Especially because yeah. I had curly hair as a child, so. I mean, my girlfriend has wavy hair, and and trust me, her hair, her head is not wavy. I, I, yeah. I, you know, I've actually done the research, her head is not wavy, her hair is, her head is not. 
Yeah, I think even kids know to take Shel Silverstein with a grain of salt. Yeah. Yeah. Just a little bit. I I went and read the description real quick, and the the guy with the lamp is one of the people who lives on an a- asteroid. So he doesn't walk around a planet. He walks around one of the asteroids. Hmm. Okay. All righty. Uh, number 19. A really cool giant is responsible for your dreams. Mm. Really? I've had some really <laughs> hellacious dreams. This thing is not doing his job. Yeah, especially when he like is supposed to be locking up the nightmares. Or, yeah. you know, giving them to the, the other giants. <laughs> so they can dream about Jack. Oh, dear. <laughs> oh, but yeah. Let's see. Number 20. Happy thoughts and fairy dust are all you need to fly. I wish. Oh, mm. God. Just give me fairy dust and happy thoughts. Oh, yeah. I would love to be able to fly anywhere on my own power. But now, unfortunately, it, we can't do that. Now, it's a good thing they didn't say angel dust because that would actually make you think you could fly. Yeah, with very unfortunate consequences. Ooh. And not too many happy thoughts. No. No, not at all. Uh, number 21. You could be a mystery solving detective when you're a teenager. Oh, well, you, you can. So, yeah, I mean, it's not horribly likely, but you could be. Yeah. Oh, God. First, you know what? I, I saw this. I saw the you know, what they're describing. Am I the only one who thought of the South Park parody? Yes. Yeah. No, no. Rather, rather <laughs> I thought of that, too. <laughs> I didn't. <laughs> oh, dear. Number 22. If you sign a document with your left hand instead of the right, it won't legally count. That, to be honest, I didn't read the book, so. Me neither. Oh, I, I think this was the, yeah, yeah, this was the very first book of uh, a series of unfortunate events, and the the scenario is that Count Olaf is trying to marry, uh, oh God, I can't, I can't remember who the girl's name is, Violet, I think, mm-hmm. and, uh. Yeah, they, she, he, like, stages uh, this whole scenario where he gets, like, an actual judge to sign, uh, to, like, sign the document, and then Violet signs it with her left hand so that it doesn't actually account for it. It's, 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 it's screwy at best, but that's kind of the nature of the books. Yeah. <laughs> Playing fast and loose with legal things, and, and what is legal? Like, what would be legal? How would it would be legal to treat these kids? Yeah, number 23... Animals can talk and have whole societies and worlds of their own. Uh, based well, on this... duh. Yeah. I think out of all the, the things on this list, this is the one that I actually still kind of want to believe is is real, that they just have different methods of communication, but, you know. Huh. Well, yeah, just look at ants. I mean, you got ant hill colonies. You know they've got to have their own society, their own way of communicating. It's just we look at it like oh oh a bunch of dumb ants running around. Let, let's, the, let's pour some grits down there. <laughs> I think the <laughs> probably the more damaging message of Charlotte's Web is if you are young and uh, or I guess youthful enough. Sorry for the redundancy, but yeah, if you if you are youthful enough and believe enough, you can hear the animals talk too. Yay! Yeah. You know, I I tried that as a kid. It didn't work. None of my cats yeah. ever talked to me. My cat just thinks I'm an idiot. Yeah. Number 24. Your school bus won't just drive you to school. It'll also fly you around on adventures. And you'll always be stuck yeah. with the one kid who never even was supposed to be there today. Mm-hmm. <laughs> <laughs> oh, dear. Uh, that would have been awesome if, if we had the magic school bus. That would have been awesome. Yeah. I love those books. Never saw the cartoon, but I read the books. Cartoon is pretty I've good. I've seen the cartoon. Yeah, yeah. It, it, I mean, it's it's a different. It, it takes a different sort of approach. It's not quite as edutainment based as the books were, but it's still a lot of fun, and you learn a few things. Oh uh, yeah, number twenty-five. It's not hard to get out of jams. Just slide down a clothing line. No, oh, do not try this. So <laughs> do not try this. Right. It, it only works for him because he's a monkey. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> there, there are a lot of things that George does to get out of a situation that he can do because he's a monkey and you can't. Yeah. We we we, we may be similarly built to a certain degree, but uh, no. Not, you know, <laughs> sliding down a clothing line, 
need a lad. <laughs> yeah, that, uh, that, that's my go-to, a lad. He can do it because he's a cartoon. Ah. And he has a monkey. Yes. Ah. Number 26, carrots and celery are just as fun to eat as candy when you go to the movies. That depends no. on who you are. Uh, it, no, it, celery it, is let, really let, never fun to eat. Let me just ah. say that if, if you're somebody who's eating a car- carrot or a stick of celery in a movie theater, you are going to get the full force of my wrath. Because yeah. those are loud foods to eat. This is true. Uh, that's oh wait, that's what you cook them, boil them, so we're so they were softer, and then you can just oh, that was... boiled <laughs> celery. Yeah, what kind of I monster are you? <laughs> that's so horrible. Well, well, okay, at least at least cooked you know carrots that are cooked. So, it, uh, so I, I personally prefer them raw myself. So. Yeah. But but it's it's one way you could get around the whole crunchy. Yeah. Not that I would actually not that I would recommend it, but it's it's a way. Uh, number twenty seven. Going to the doctor is actually fun. Well, it can be. Yeah. I don't know. I, I was always. As I haven't a been kid, to the doctor I, a lot. It, it was never really fun. <laughs> yeah. I can't say like that. Actually, going to the doctors was like a was fun but i always was like very intrigued by it whenever we'd go to the hospital and uh just there was this you know this big white rooms with all these this sterile equipment and it just it felt very sort of futuristic to me as a kid mm-hmm. oh yeah and of course with the waiting rooms i w- by the time we were going to the doctor more and more often the game boy had been out and of course guess who got to guess who was allowed to play game boy as long as the batteries lasted. <laughs> oh yes. Oh yeah. So they're playing Metroid Two the whole time. You know, yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, <laughs> uh. That's what I do with the doctor now. Obviously, not on the Game Boy on my 3DS, but yes. Um, all right, I'm in the waiting room for a couple of hours, so. Yeah, let's <laughs> let's fire up some Play Pokemon. Some <laughs> Animal Crossing. There you go. Uh, number twenty-eight. Bad luck is hereditary, especially if your great great grandfather is cursed. No, I don't care uh, what it says. No, I, I, I'm probably got some really awful luck, but that's how I can guarantee you that it's not hereditary. <laughs> yeah. Uh, no, 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 no. You know, a lot of things are hereditary. You know, you know, hair, eyes, sexuality. Not bad luck. No. Yeah. But but Madame Zeroni says to, uh, uh, in the book, if you fail to come back from Madame Zeroni, you and your family will be cursed forever and for eternity. So there there you go. Sorry. Yeah, yeah. I, I think even if curses did work, you couldn't curse somebody forever. Well, he does break the curse, though. True. So it's not forever, but... Right. Uh, number 29. The mice you find in your house scoot around on motorcycles. Uh, no. I don't. No, but, no, but I can't but... even say that would be awesome, because I really don't want mice in my house. No, thank you. My, yeah, with, you the, know, with the we... sound of like a like a dozen tiny motorcycles just <laughs> interrupting you while you sleep, or like, if you're trying no, to record you're... something. <laughs> Uh, what the hell is that? Oh, teeny tiny motorcycle. Okay. Yeah, and you get like teeny tiny motorcycle tra- treads on like like your clothes if you leave them on the floor or whatever. <laughs> like, ah. Uh. Well, uh, I guess course, it's time you know, to bust out the teeny tiny spike traps. There you go. And of and of course, you know, mice. They you know they they have no no uh, understanding of you know you know we tend to want to poop in one place. So, of course, you, there's going to be a rat, you know, like a mouse turd on the floor, and some dumbass mouse is going to run over it and spread it everywhere. Yeah, smear it into the carpet. Yeah. Not not, not desirable. No. Uh, number 30, and I think this is going to be the last one, because we are coming up on time a little bit here. Um, drinking mystery potions can help you shrink. And what is it? Eating, eating like, like mystery eating bread? Eating cakes. Can help, yeah. yeah. Cakes can help you grow. Sure. And, and mushrooms. Eating oh, mushrooms yes. will also help you grow. Yes. <laughs> eating mushrooms will do magical things to you. Yes. Well, <laughs> eating mushrooms will feel magical, but <laughs> it's a totally different thing. <laughs> oh, definitely. Yes. And then you wake up and you realize you created a whole franchise about two plumbers who rescue a princess. <laughs> uh. 
Oh, okay, okay. Speaking of, speaking of which, I, I I do want to do this last one in here because this this is something I've you know a childhood thing. You can swallow a live turtle and still survive to tell the tale. Oh. No, no, no I did not re- do this myself, obviously, but it's from Tales of a Fourth Grade Nothing, one of the the Fudge series of books by Judy Bloom. I grew up reading those books. I love them. You could <laughs> oh, yeah. probably swallow a baby turtle. Yeah. Because they're pretty but, little. Yeah. Yeah. Thing is, though, turtles uh, are like carriers of salmonella, so it's not advisable under any right. circumstances. Right. Well, I'm just unless... saying it's probably not going to kill you. <laughs> You will yeah. be really sick, but... <laughs> oh, yeah. And in the book, yeah, the the kid, he got really, really sick. <laughs> oh, Didn't, dear. Or am I thinking of a different one? Um, I mean, I don't think it's the same this series, this is another but... book that I've read that I don't remember the enough of the story to be able to comment on it. Yeah, it was like, it was like one of the last things to happen in the book, you know, just like towards the very end. He's like, I swallowed a turtle! <laughs> yep. Yeah, it was like the first thing that happens in the book is he gets a turtle for his birthday, and then his little brother's like, "Yep, yeah, I ate it." And it's like <laughs> you little dumb shit. <laughs> <laughs> oh. oh, but that uh, that is going to be uh, about as much time as we have for uh, this particular week. Um, if you want to see the rest of them, it's on BuzzFeed. Uh, Fifty two lies children's books told you growing up. Uh, if you want to see the rest of them for yourself or just look over some of them yourself, maybe, you know, maybe spread it around because it's a it's a decent list, even with the holes we've poked in all of them. Um, so uh, there is that. Uh, thank you guys for listening. If you want to, if we were to go and find uh, Gonzo on the social media, where can we find him? Well, um, I have a Twitter at Gonzo link. Uh, I also have a Tumblr. Same same name. And uh, you, uh, I guess a, a YouTube uh, same name, and uh, that's that's about it really. I, I tend to keep kind of a low profile, but uh, I, I pop up now here and then. I'm you know a fan of the online reviewer community, uh, and I, yeah, I get around. But yeah, I'd say uh, I'd say my Twitter and Tumblr are where I do spend the most time. Sweet. And where can we find Holly Christine? You can find me all sorts of places. So Tumblr, Twitter, so many things. As GookyGox, G-O-O-K-Y-G-O-X. You can also go to my Etsy store, which is gookygox.etsy.com. And there's my Facebook fan page, which is Holly Christine Brown. And over on your advice. Yes, where she is responsible for for making sure things go up as they should and the proper stuff. You're you're, you're what chief editor in chief? I think it's the official I'm title. Head editor. Head editor. That's right. I I, I know it's editor something. <laughs> <laughs> and I'm a part of Nerd Vice. I should know this. Oh. <laughs> and you can find me if you want to find me on Twitter, Gomer21XX, Tumblr, Gomer21XX. And if you're not following me, why the hell not? Um, you can also find me on rtgomer.com and nerdvice.com where you can find my videos and, and other podcasts and and also works by other great and talented people such as Diamanda Hagen, The Omega, Lady Spaz over on Nerdvice, Smarty I believe is also on Nerdvice, yep. and just, just a whole bunch of other people you really should go and check out. Um, also, um, I do have a Patreon page, uh, patreon.com slash gomer21xx. Uh, at this point, all monies that are brought in through the Patreon page are go towards just pretty much upkeep and upgrade of the equipment. If you're listening to my audio, you can tell I could use a bit of an upgrade. I do have my eye on something, um, and, and, and um, hopefully within the next couple of months, if I keep the patrons where they are now, I should be able to pick it up, hopefully, fingers crossed. But um, – but, you know, any help to allow me to get it sooner would be great. Um, again, patreon.com slash gomer21xx. And, uh, you know, I do have two rewards, one of the which is if you just, you know, pledge $5 a month, you get early access. Plus, I'm also going to be doing special uh, request videos, mostly gameplay videos. I've been working on a couple of them. I do have a couple of requests. But um, if, if you want to see those, you know, $5 a month. There, there, yeah, there you go. Or at least pledge five dollars a month, um, and twenty dollars gets you ad space. We're finally going to. She is finally almost done with with her ad, and we can hopefully have it up on the site this weekend. It'll be great because because then people will 
will won't assume that I'm just taking her for a ride when I'm really not. <laughs> <laughs> it, it's it's just life is life has pretty much kicked her in the face, so she's been trying to get things done. But anyway, that's enough of the, my spieling and whoring myself out a little bit more. Uh, again, thank. you. I have one more thing to say. Oh, Go yes. check out the Goth- Gotham High audio drama. Yes, which. By the way, um, I don't I don't remember if it's been updated much, but it can also be found on rtgomer.com as well. So, whoop! Um, I, I think it just needs to be caught up or whatever. But at any rate, thank you guys for listening. We will catch you next week with 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 hopefully. Um, and until then, this is Gomer the Ranting Thespian with Holly Christine and Gonzo Link signing off. Bye. Have a good one. Constructive Deconstruction is an RT Gomer Productions presentation. Check us out at rtgomer.com.